Hey guys, George at Soundtracks here, and this week we're going to resurrect one of our series that we started a while back, but kind of got lost off in all the other cool stuff and the announcements of the Blue Nami. Now this series is called Getting Back to Basics, and Getting Back to Basics is going to remind us of some of the basic parts of running our DCC locomotives and trains while we cover the settings and so forth and things that you can do to just get started in your model railroading and your DCC adventure. So today we're going to talk about just setting an address. You can't get much more basic than that. So let's get started. So one of the things that we first pick up our decoders, we get the decoder installed, and one of the first things we have to address is, of course, the address. Now, first off, let's just talk about what the address is. Now, much like your house address, this is where the information from the DCC system is sent. Now, normally out of the package, your decoder is going to be defaulted to a value of 3 or address 3. So when you dial up your system and you're testing with it, you're going to send commands to address 3 and your decoder is going to respond. For example, the quick two blasts of the short horn. The command that's being sent over the broadcast is, hey everybody listen up, locomotive 3, turn on F3, end of transmission, and then immediately following, hey everybody listen up, locomotive 3, turn off F3 and then end a transmission. And so that command quickly comes across. And so that way any decoder that is set currently to address three is gonna pick up that command and respond. Any decoder that is not set to address three, the decoder knows that information is not intended for that particular decoder, so it ignores the command and continues doing whatever it was doing, whether it's sitting still or moving around the layout. So in the decoders, the primary address, which is address three, is usually the one that's defaulted. Now, in each decoder, there's two types of addresses. You have the primary or the basic address, and this is stored in CV1. And CV1 sets to a value of 1 to 128. And so this is why it's called the primary address, because early on, that was all that was available. Now, later on, as DCC became more uh, widely used, now they decided that we wanted to match, for example, the four-digit address on the side of the cab. And so, therefore, we created what was called extended addressing. Now, for those of you who use NCE, you'll know the term as long address or short address for the primary. And in Digitrax lingo, you're actually going to hear the terms two-digit and four-digit. And so really they're all referring to the same types of things. The primary, the short address, or the two digit address is what's stored in CV1. And that is the, the value of three as we see uh, out of the package. Now you can program these addresses to do whichever you'd like. Um, you also have access to the extended address or what's also known as the long address or the four digit. So we've done a video explaining the differences of these that you can see linked in the video description down below. But today we're going to go teach you how to program those addresses. So first thing is, let's say for example we have this locomotive 8663 and right now my command station says address 3. So when I blow the horn, as we've showed you, that command is sent to address three. But now if I grab another locomotive, let's say this is another brand new locomotive that I just bought and I put it on the track and they're all set to address three. When I blow the horn, you're now hearing both of them blow the horn, same thing. And when I turn on the bell, you're hearing all the bells ringing because all of these locomotives are set to address three. So the way you wanna be able to differentiate which one you're controlling is by changing the address. So we're gonna take this locomotive off the track for a moment because when we program the address, you wanna program one locomotive at a time. Now you can do this on the main line, but today we're gonna to show you an example of doing it on the programming track that allows you to do this. So for this locomotive here, we're gonna go ahead and go to programming track mode. And when I go to programming track mode, I can press, I can program a CV directly. So in this case, if I wanted to change the short address three to say address 63, which is the last two digits on this locomotive, I can go in here and program CV one to a value of 63. Now when I exit out, when I send my command to address three, nothing happens. But when I select my loco 63 that I just changed my address to, now I have my horn back. And so now when I put my locomotives on the track, 
I can send a command to address 63, and then I can send a command to address 3. So I select loco 3, and now I'm able to talk to that locomotive independently so that one locomotive gets the command and the other one is separate. Now the other type of addressing is what's known as extended. You can also hear it as four digit or as I talked about the long digit or the long address. And so normally when doing this, there's a somewhat, in my opinion, take it for what it's worth, uh, unnecessarily complicated mathematical algorithm that you set the address in to determine. Now the CVs for the long address or extended address are stored in CV 17 and 18. So to determine these values, you're gonna take your desired address, you're gonna add 49152 to that value, and then you're gonna divide by 256. Your, your quotient goes into CV 17 and your remainder goes into CV 18. See what I mean? It's a little unnecessarily complicated, but it has to do with the way the digital systems work. So in order to do that, most of your DCC systems are able to do the work for you. So when you're on the programming track or on the main line, when you go in to try to set the four digit or extended type addressing, usually your command station will ask you to enter the address and then it will do the math for you behind the scenes. So in this case, locomotive three, I'm going to go ahead and program, and in this case, I'm going to program on the main, and the reason I'm going to do that is because when I'm making changes to my address, I have to make changes to the inactive address. Only one of those addresses will be active at any one time, either the two-digit, basic, uh, short, whatever, or the four-digit extended long address. One of those is active at all times, so you can't have two addresses active on the decoder at the same time. And so therefore, when I do this on the main line, I'm actually making changes to the inactive address, which in this case is the four digit, because we use the programming track to set the short address to a value of 63. So now I'm gonna go ahead and program on the main. I'm gonna program my loco 63, and now I'm gonna change its address. Now my command station is walking me through the prompt. So in this particular case, this is asking me, do I wanna set the long or the short because it's an NCE system. I'm gonna go ahead and set the long as 8663. I'm gonna press enter. And then on my screen, it's gonna say loco 8663. And now when I blow my horn, I'm talking directly to this locomotive. Now this one here is still set to address three. So I can go in and make changes. Now the problem is 124 is still technically considered a short or two digit address. So in order to do this one, I would have to go to programming track and set it. So when I do that, I'll take this locomotive off the track. We're gonna go program on the programming track. We're gonna change the standard is what it's is the way this walks you through to set the address. You can also go in and set CV1, which is what I had done before. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Uh, CV number one, it's set to a value of three. So now I'm gonna set it to 124, enter. And then now when I exit out, I select local 124. And when I blow the horn, now I have access to blowing the horn. So changing the address it really is going to be dependent on your command station. Uh, I would recommend following the prompts. There's also another tool that you can go online and search DCC address calculators where you can type in your desired address and it will auto calculate those CV values for you. So you can go in and actually uh, program the CV at, for the address directly. Now the last part, and we're going to talk about this in another video, is CB29, and CB29 determines which address is active. One of the settings in CB29 determines whether the short two-digit address or the long four-digit address is active. So this just covers the basics of addressing, setting the, setting the address in your decoder, and how to do it, whether it being on the programming track or on the main line. Now, all of these addresses can be stored in any of our decoders, whether they're motor non-sound decoders, they're the Tsunami 2s, Blue Namis, Eco Namis, whatever the case, all of these addresses are set the same way. However, when you have a Blue Nami, you can simply open the app. Now, I'm going to do this here. Now, when I open up the Blue Nami app, you're going to see that my locomotives are both going to be detected. Now, when I connect to them, I'm going to go ahead and connect. 
and we're going to go to standard here so we can talk to one locomotive at a time and now it's going to quickly collect all the data basically checking all the cvs to make sure what's changed and everything and make sure all the mapping uh, or the uh, menus and everything match to what is actually in the decoder so in this case for the p4 sitting over here we can go over here to our settings and up here at the top you see our local nickname says norman's Amtrak P4, well, we're going to fix that because Norman doesn't need an Amtrak P4. This is George's. That's right. It's George's Amtrak P4. So we can change the loco nickname so the address becomes somewhat irrelevant. But right below where we set our name, you can see the address. So we can go in here and change this. And you saw that it was 124. You see it's listed as the primary. But if I go in here and change it to, let's say, 1240, and when I hit the, re, uh, the apply button, you can see that the app automatically detects that that's an extended address. So the app again does the work for you behind the scenes with the math and sets the CVs appropriately. So we can come back in here and we can change this to 124, hit apply, and you're going to see that the app automatically changes the address to the extent or to the primary version versus the extended. And we can do this on any of our locomotives. So when we go over here to the uh, Pittsburgh Lake Erie here we're gonna go again so we've got our ST which is soundtracks Pittsburgh Lake Erie we can come in here and change this to 63 and we're gonna hit apply so now we've changed the DCC address to 63 but one of the cool things I'm going to show you is we can use the app to make all of our settings in the decoder then we can operate it using a DCC system but the problem is once you connect to the app you have to cycle away from track power to regain DCC control. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect here. And then I'm going to go ahead and rock it. And of course it has a current keeper. So we have to wait till the current keeper fully discharges. And once the current keeper fully discharges, we're gonna go back. But in preparation, I'm gonna go ahead and select my Loco 63, which is the short address that we programmed in the Blue Nami app. So when the light goes out on my locomotive, we'll know that it's ready to go in and operate on DC. And the light just went out. We're gonna just go ahead and wait a few more seconds just to make sure. Now when we set it down, now when I control it with my DCC system, you can see that I have control back to my DCC system so I can actually run it and operate it as long as I don't connect to the app. So this is one of the benefits of Blue Nami is you can make all of your changes in the app and then cycle the power and then go back and run your trains on your DCC system. So guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our support department at support at soundtracks.com or give us a call in the office Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30 Mountain Daylight Time. So guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.